Topping today's news, the immigration minister reacts to comments by a fellow PLP MP that Abaco is being overrun by illegal migrants. The Minister of Natural Resources meets with mining companies on Grand Bahama, another drowning in the country, this time on Eleuthera, and four people charged with manslaughter after their pet dogs mauled a man to death. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. In response to John Pinder, the PLP Member of Parliament for Central and South Abaco's comments that the undocumented migrant situation on Abaco is closing in on Bahamian population, Minister of Immigration Keith Bell says the media was not appropriate in reporting everything his fellow PLP MP had to say, adding that Mr. Pinder also said the government is moving in the right direction. Mr. Bell acknowledges that the migrant situation on Abaco needs to be addressed as well as other locations in the Bahamas where large irregular migrant populations reside. For me, the central issue is what is the government doing about it? I think that is the focus and I think that ought to remain the focus um, of the Bahamian people and, and certainly all of us. And so you would recall um, several things that the government has done. Uh, first of all, in 2014, the government commenced the largest investment in the Royal Bahamas Defense Forces history with the Sandy Bottom Project. We invested over $200 million in new vessels. And so what we have sought to do was to ensure that we equipped our law enforcement agencies mm. with the requisite mm. tools, that is, seafaring deep ocean vessels, mm. which, was, which are able to create a blockade. Secondly, we have partnered with the United States, the United States Coast Guard, and certainly the Takes and Caicos Island, to ensure that all three countries partner and ensure that we seek to um, block the southern route coming not just into the Bahamas, but certainly the Turks and Caicos into the United States. We have done those things. We have decentralized uh, the Royal Bahamas the Defense Force. Speaking on the efforts of immigration to combat a migrant situation, which some have labeled as a crisis, Minister Bell says his department has a long-standing history of following due diligence when handling irregular migrants. He noted that 173 immigration officers are set to graduate on November 2nd, and as well as having boots on the ground on Abaco, referring to Operation Expedition. Mr. Bell says the government will continue to maintain a presence on Abaco and other islands. When asked about Mr. Pinder's suggesting stiffer penalties should be in place for employers of undocumented migrants. Minister Bell says there is a process that is being followed. It is something that is always being proposed in terms of stiffer penalties, stiffer fines, but not just uh, the employers, but also persons who are undocumented. There is a process um, and we are seeking to ensure. I Just recently, up to last week, we put persons before <clears throat> the courts and up to last evening, I would have signed in excess of 100 repatriation orders, deportation orders. And so we have a, a flight scheduled this morning uh, to take irregular migrants back to Cuba. And later on this week, I think there's about two flights, Bahamas they are destined to um, Haiti to take irregular migrants back. So we are in fact enforcing the laws. Asked if he feels government is doing enough about the illegal immigration problem in the country, Minister Bell says that is a subjective question. Instead, he said the numbers suggest that the government is working, having already repatriated over 2,000 people for the year, while those individuals found to be in violation of the immigration laws are put before the courts. The Minister of Labor and Immigration, Keith Bell, led a delegation of senior government officials from the Department of Labor and the Department of Immigration on an extensive tour of Eleuthera during a recent two-day trip on that island. And during the two-day mission, Minister Bell met with administrators of North Eleuthera, Stephen Wilson, and Chief Counselor in Harbor Island, Terence Davis, where they discussed matters of concern to residents, chief of which was the illegal immigration challenge on the island. The Labor and Immigration Minister also met with family island councillors and administrators on Spanish Wells who also expressed concerns about illegal immigration challenges on North Eleuthera as well as non-Bahamians fishing illegally in Bahamian waters. Minister Bell assured the island administrators and business owners that his ministry is committed to doing all in its power to address their concerns. 
Minister Bell and his team also visited the illegal shantytown community on North Luther, known as Blackwood. Other stops included a visit at the immigration office on Harbor Island and at the Lower Bog station as well. And he also spoke with members there, uh, listening to their concerns. Minister Bell's tour ended in South Eleuther with a tour of the immigration office in Rock Sound and Governor's Harbor. Meanwhile, Lincoln Bain, leader of the Coalition of Independents, and eight of the party supporters were charged in the magistrate's court last week while attempting to hand out amended drafts to the Nationality Act to members of parliament, which prevents illegal immigrants coming to the Bahamas and getting status. Before his arrest, Mr. Bain was able to get a copy of the amended act into the hands of Immigration and Labor Minister Keith Bell, who acknowledged on Friday while at the office of the Prime Minister that he did receive a copy from Mr. Bain and that he is in the process of referring it to the office of the Attorney General. Mr. Bell reminded that any Bahamian has the right to bring or ask their member of parliament to consider a matter of public importance. He went on to say once he gets feedback from the AG's office, then the government may review and consider the recommendations put forth, although they are not new ideas to the government. Meanwhile, Mr. Bain and the Coalition of Independent Supporters, who all pleaded not guilty to their charges, uh, they will be returning to court on December 1st for a trial. Last week, Minister of Environment and Natural Resources Vaughn Miller said he is satisfied with the cleanup of the oil spill at Equinor South Riding Point and in the surrounding communities in East Grand Bahama, but noted that the cleanup efforts continues, particularly the restoration of the forest. Miller said it was out of concern for Grand Bahama that he visited. Mr. Miller, along with members of his ministry, were in Grand Bahama for a series of meetings with companies and businesses that deal in natural resources. He said with regards to limestone and other aggregates that are mined in Grand Bahama, he wanted to sit with the businesses and companies involved in these areas and have some meaningful conversations and dialogue. During his three-day visit, Minister Miller, along with Minister from Grand Bahama, Ginger Moxie, held meetings with executives at the Grand Bahama Port Authority, executives at Buckeye Bahamas, and executives at Bahama Rock, while the public debate over the value of natural resources like aragonite continues. The Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, Investments and Aviation happily announcing that the Bahamas has been nominated for three awards at the World Travel Awards. You can actually go online and you can vote for the Bahamas to win the world's leading cruise destination 2022, the world's leading wedding destination 2022, and the world's most romantic destination 2022. World Travel Awards was established in 1993 to acknowledge, reward, and celebrate excellence across all key sectors of the travel, tourism, and hospitality the industries. You can log on to www.worldtravelawards.com to vote for the Bahamas. In the category of world leading cruise destination, there are 13 countries, including Brazil, Dubai, Jamaica, and Italy. In the world's leading wedding destination, there are seven countries, including St. Lucia, Indonesia, and Mauritius. And in the category for most romantic destination, along with the Bahamas, there are 11 countries, or including the Bahamas, there are 11 countries, which include the Turks and Caicos, Seychelles, the Maldives, and Antigua and Barbuda. So be sure to log on and vote for the 242 before voting closes. And finally, in this segment, October is National Youth Month here in the Bahamas, and there are quite a number of events that have been organized that will motivate and highlight the nation's youth. Hundreds of young people of various organizations and clubs took part in the Youth March on Sunday to celebrate Youth Month, the event hosted by the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture. It was the first opportunity to march since the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. They began at Clifford Park taking the route to Blue Hill Road, onto Point Siena Drive, Nassau Street, and onto West Bay Street, back to Clifford Park. The ministry's theme for Youth Month is Youth Building a Bold Future. Mario Boleg, Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, he believes it is important to engage the nation's youth with things positive. The Family Islands are also involved in the month of activities. All of the events scheduled for the remainder of the month will be completely free, so as many young people as possible can be involved. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.